Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of <coughs> Mix Mowers. Got my Riley boy here, he's as happy as pig in pup today. What have you been up to? Anything good? Did you call me? I did call you, I called you to come down and do a video with Why? me. Why? Well, because you was indoors playing the piano and just making nuisance of yourself in general. You, you call me WhatsApp? No, no, on normal phone, not WhatsApp. Anyway, what? Um, what have you been doing today? With a lawnmower. We went and got a lawnmower. What colour was the lawnmower? Red. It was a red one, yeah. So today we went out and we picked up a Mountfield 414 up for sale on Facebook Marketplace for 20 quid. Um, and the diagnosis was the bloke said it all runs fine, just revs its head off. Um, so that's what we're looking at today. Um, we should see, these machines do hunt and surge quite a bit. So uh, we'll have a little look at it anyway, see how we get on. I have got a um, uh, a little envelope. There's a couple in there. There's actually just two. Yeah, one there. Let's pick that one out first. Look. No, no, that little one. Got him? Right, pick that one out first. Don't drop it. What's it say? Uh, it says uh, mixed mowers and then our address. So what's in there? Have a little look in there. We'll find out. Let's find out, guys. <laughs> are you going to share it with us or are you just going to hide it? Wait, Let's have a look. What's your name? So we've got a sticker here from uh, Tom Doby, uh, Mower Repair. You've got two, one for you, one for me. Um, so we've got a sticker there from Tom Doby. Go and okay. check his channel out. Tom. What's your show? It says Tom Doby, Mower Repair. He sent us his business card as well. Handyman, lawn care, pressure washing, welding, fabrication, Doesn't painting, like plumbing, that. electrical roofing, electrical roofing. He does loads, locksmithing and carpentry. There's his phone number and his email address. It's a sticker. It's a sticker, mate. Yep. So we've got that one there. So that's cool. And what's up this one here? A puzzle. That's no, not a puzzle, just a letter. Open that one up. Hmm. Oh, there's, yeah, hang on, hang on. Look, you missed it here. Look, we've got a bit here as well. Look, that one there. Yes. It's two, it's all yours. Daddy. Yeah, I'll hold this one then. Sorry. Yes. So what's that sticker there then? It says inmate Grandpa Kevin. This is Grandpa Kevin's um, sticker. It's been going around Facebook for quite a while now. There's Grandpa Kev. He sent a, a sticker over to us from from USA. Money. That's not money. No, this is a sticker from um, Everyday Solars. It sent a big. They've got a massive sticker over there. Go and check them out. Thank you very much for that. And we've, got a, we've got a love letter here. It says, thanks for watching my videos. I do appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the sticker with a thumbs up and emoji. And it says, Grandpa Kevin, that's his address. Hi Mick, uh, sending you this uh, for Kevin. So this has come from Everyday Solars. Um, uh, Solars. Uh, P.S. would love to add one of yours to my collection. So Everyday Solars wants one of our stickers as well. That's cool. So not a problem. We can send one of them over to you. No problem at all. That's absolutely fantastic. I'll get them put up on the old um, Wall of Shame, Wall of Fame board. And we'll go from there, shall we? Yeah. You had lunch yet? Yeah. What do you have for lunch? Uh, I got... Hula hoops. Uh, Cheese straw. Uh, oh what? Uh, <laughs> Sausage. Yes. Sausages. Yeah. Um, I got um. Chocolate bar. Yeah. What, what's your name? What's what's your name? Uh, uh, it's time. T-shirts. T-shirts. No. What? You mommy buy. What mommy buy? Oh, cheddars. Yeah. Mini cheddars. I start. It's so hard to understand him sometimes. He knows what he wants to say, but he just he just can't get it out of the old tongue, can you? But you do try, and that's all. It's good enough for us. Uh, Tower cheese. Oh, also, yeah, we've booked up to go to uh, to Salt X. By the time you come, we might have been here. We've booked up to go to Salt X as well, which is the um, uh, the indoor exhibition Tower in Birmingham. Tea. We're going to that, ain't we? We have a great Tower fun. Tower Tea. Eh? Hey? Tower we've Got some Terrell tea as well. Yeah, that, that, that's when Terrell visits, but he's not visiting yet. So that's cool. So yeah, we'll get on and do the Mountfield Four and Four. Thank you very much for your stickers. So without further ado, let's get down. Get dirty. Let's get dirty and let's check out this Mountfield Four One Four with the RS One Hundred engine on. What the bloke sold me and told me it was revving its head off. Right, let's get the mower in then, have a quick little look at it. It's a little Mountfield 414, as I say. <coughs> but uh, I have literally just picked it up. Literally, no, no less than about three or four minutes ago. <sighs> so, because these sell quite well in my area, I thought I'd just pick it up. They're very, very light, so no need to muck about with a table lift. Now, I like these little mowers. I like them a lot. Um, as I say, they sell really, really well. Let me just reposition the old cam around. Let's bring you guys down here. And then we'll swing around and put you down on the way like that. Um, so the bloke said initially that the, uh, it runs it runs fine, it just revs its head off. That was his exact words. So let's put a bit of fuel in, because for a that runs fine, 
there's no fuel in it. So that leads me to be, to be suspicious. Let me just back you guys up a touch. So I just want to pull this lawnmower out a touch off of the older enclosed space. Right, let's pump. See what we get. I can't hear it priming. It don't sound like it's priming to me. Oh, wow. So we've got a carburetor leak just there as well, I can see. That either, uh, that's either a carburetor leak or uh, that's why I've overprimed it. <clears throat> so, a revving engine. I believe, as fella said, this is actually <coughs> um, his stepfather's mower. But uh, let me just uh, zoom you in. Right, so I think I have already found one of the issues, if, if there's going to be any more. I, I definitely have found one. And it's over revving because somebody has put a cable tie onto this fuel cable which is not allowing the governor to actually move and we have got a bit of a leak coming off of this carburetor so i would say we've got a bit of a fuel leak going on so what i'm going to do is first off i want to remove that cable tie and the chances are we're going to remove this cable tie and then that will then uh, uh the machine will probably start to hunt in my in my experience Let's get rid of that. So now the governor will actually move, but I don't think it's moving correctly because so, this pipe sh is where it shouldn't be. It should be around the back. So let's get a 10 mil. I think it's fair to say the old fiddle fairies have been in, which is a standard, standard procedure. Mower don't run right, do anything to her to put it right. So I want to stop that fuel from leaking because um, it would ruin the deck otherwise. Now that's quite a thick old, thick old um, fuel pipe on there. That's like for a quantum. Let's just stem that flow, if it will. And let's, I'm not gonna remove the carb. Oh, hello. All I wanna do is take that um, fuel lead off. but then I don't think it's priming anyway. Let me take that primer assembly off of it. Hang on, I'm missing a nut here somewhere. Where did that go? Where did that go? I'm missing, I dropped a nut somewhere. That's gotta be found. It can't be far. I'll find another one if need be. A little space over here, that's gotta come off. I bet it's down here, I've got, got the nut. I found my nuts. <clears throat> right, so that's still leaking. Um, and I do need a new set of forceps, that's what I do need. I've only got one pair left. All my other ones are all breaking. And these ones are not very good. The gasket looks absolutely knackered. So what we're going to do now... So this mower, I only give 20 quid for this mower. I don't mind telling you. I don't pay a lot of money for the old machines. Not broken ones. One of these little fuel clamps on. So this isn't this isn't a standard fuel hose for this uh, for this mount field. This is a wrong fuel hose, in fact. Let's take this fuel hose off. Oh, I'm gonna have another leak. Okay, so it's got a bit of fuel hose. Hang on. Oh, let me grab that. Oh. Um, there's actually got a bit of fuel hose actually on the carby itself, which is part of the original fuel hose. See how those clamps don't lock off. I need a new set. The teeth are worn out on this one. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to bring that round and I'm going to very carefully try and get rid of this, this fuel out of here. That would be better, won't it, Mick? Let's just dispose of it rather than uh, having it leaking absolutely everywhere. Let's put it back in the old fuel can. Let me drain that off. Because if you don't if you don't get all the um fuel off these decks, then what tends to happen is uh it tends to bleach the decks, makes them go white. So 
that's pretty much all the fuel out. So just gonna mop this fuel up best I can. And then get some WD-40 and just spray that deck quickly. It just neutralizes the, uh, the petrol. Leave it on there. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna twist this, um, this fuel pipe off, off of a tank. This is actually off of a Quantum or something like that. Now these 414s, they actually have a special fuel fuel pipe, which I don't have in stock. You, have, you actually have to buy them separately because they're wider at one end than they are the other. Um, it's just something Mountfield decided to, to, uh, to make to um, stop you putting universal stuff on. That's why I did it. So I've got a bit of fuel pipe here, and this is the original one on there, that's all brittle. So what I do have in my stock is some fuel pipe. No, I had that yesterday, so where did that go? <clears throat> a big lump of fuel pipe, I was using it just yesterday. That's quantum, that might be a bit too thick as well. Let me locate my Honda pipe, I had that out yesterday. Give us two ticks. Right, so I've got my Honda pipe. Um, this may be too thick, but what we can do is, um, someone bought me this off my Amazon wish list, which is quite cool. What we can do is put that into some hot water, make it really soft and supple and have it go over top of that. Because that, that, that fuel connection is, too, is too, uh, too broad. That will fit on that one lovely. Um, and then we're gonna put it behind. There's actually a little tiny clip just here for this fuel pipe to go around behind and sit in behind the control panel of this, uh, of this mower. Let me just squeeze that up, I can barely see it. Cool, there it is. There's a little tiny clip here, let's see. And you're supposed to put the fuel pipe in there, like so. That then holds your fuel pipe in behind the control panel, you see. So I keep all of that bit, and that's where that's where it needs to go. It needs to go behind the panel. So I'm going to get a, um, they're going to get the kettle on. We we'll boil the kettle up. I'll put this end in some hot water, make this pipe really supple, and I'll try and slide it over the top of there. No easy thing, but hopefully we can do it because the the original 414 fuel pipes have an extended piece just here, uh, which is a bit of a pig because you got you got to buy them separately. I do also have some old 414s out in the yard. I could possibly find a fuel pipe off of one of those. That that could be a thing. We'll see. Right, so just down here, I've got uh, some hot water, just there, look, in a, in a cup, um, which is what Riley got me for me Father's Day, says best daddy ever. Um, he'll appreciate me using this for a lawnmower fix video. <clears throat> so that's been in there for about two or three minutes. And all you're hoping is for is for that cable or that pipe to go, that's quite stiff there, but to go really, really supple just here. The longer you leave it in the hot water, the better. And you might have to keep going back to two or three times. <clears throat> So get it in the hot water, just nice and supple. And then quite quickly, before it cools down, just try and fish that over the top of that fuel, that, that tank end. As I say, you might take it two or three attempts, but you need it to be quite supple for it to go on. Now I've got it just over the lip. So now just trying to keep the pressure on. And as the pipe cools down, it will become more and more stiff. And you want it to go all the way on, right away to the end. And I'm nearly there. And I think the pipes for these are around about 13, 14 quid a go. Right, that's on. That's on, that ain't going nowhere. So now that's on, now you can put a fuel clamp on that if you want to, but the chances of that coming back off now are, are very slim and the chances of that actually leaking are even slimmer, okay? So that's on. Let me put my other lamp on, people, because uh, I've got another lamp. I keep, I keep forgetting to put this other lamp on to improve my light. And I bought it specifically for you guys, or for you guys for Christmas or for birthday. There you go, it's a bit more light. A bit more light for you, people. A bit better. Right, now that's on. What we can now do is, is fish this goes behind the control panel. This is your control panel. 
goes behind there. Okay, that way it doesn't, it doesn't interfere with a governor. Okay. And then you want that little tiny clip I showed you earlier on, this little kitty. That's got to go on to the fuel line. Bring it back a touch. Feed that over. And then that's then got to come down to about the right location, which is going to be give or take about there. That's going to be a, just about lovely. Bit of a pickle to fit these, because you've got to get behind it. And my fingers are, not, are probably not the smallest in the industry. Right behind, I've got one in, I only have one to go in. There we are. There we go. All right, that goes into there. There you go. Now see how that, that clip now sits into there? See? Now that's out of the way of the, uh, the governor. Bring that down to about there. That wants to be cut about here. It might be just a bit too long. We'll see. That's my good bit of pipe. Save that. I don't want to lose that. That will then sit onto there. Now that's a bit loosey-goosey, so I'm going to get a fuel, fuel hose clamp for that. Oh, well, that's going to leak. Now, I have got one here. I don't like these little, these, these little tiny ones. I prefer the, the ringed ones, which are these. Let me get a new set of these. I need to find out what size these ones are. So I can order just a set of these ones. So that fuel hose can come off now. I like these ones. These are the better ones. That will go onto there. Onto Carby. And then... That one, you can then go on there. Joe, that's too big too. Next size down, Mick. Okay. I don't think the next size down is going to fit on there myself. But I might be wrong. See how yellow that some of that fuel was coming out of that, that fuel line. If I flush some of that out. If that's what the colour of the fuel the fuel's coming out of the fuel line, we're going to be a uh, carburetor cleaning in a minute. Oh, that's tight. We'll see if that goes on in a minute, we'll see. Now I'm suspecting that this is one or two things that's happened here. Either the fuel line has snapped, or it was hunting and surging and, and they tried to have a go at it, and then they, uh, they broke the fuel line. So we may be going back in for a carburetor clean shortly. That's what I'm suspecting. So fuel, fuel, fuel clamps on there now, we're happy with that. I have just made a gasket up as well, paper gasket, because the old gasket was no good. So I've made a paper one. That goes on to there. Uh, happy with that. I want my nuts and bolts, bits and bobs. <coughs> um, primer bulb here, assembly goes onto this little tiny black one here. Sit him on. Little tiny clip to put on there as well. Got the fingers of a fingers of a, a hobbit to get in here. Swing that round onto the studs. And then just make sure your crankcase breather pipe goes on just behind, which mine has. I've got a stud here to fit, a stud cover. That's going to go in there. Should have fitted that before I put the airbox on. Because they can be a bit of a pickle to fit. Like this one's going to be. That's going around the back of it. Should be chamfered one end. That's it. Right, that's all on. Two 10 mils on an impact. That one's on. Right, that's all on. So technically, we've actually repaired the visual fault that was up with this machine, just the visual side of it, okay? But as I say, I'm suspectant it's going to hunt and surge. Um, only because they do, they're renowned for it. And people just try and, you know, try and get over the faults just by forcing the governor, the governor back. But I'm hoping the bloke hasn't actually managed to cut his, cut his grass with it like this. So let's now put that back together. I'm going to put a little bit of fuel in <clears throat> to see if we get a carburetor leak here which I'm hoping we don't, but again, I'm suspecting it is. <clears throat> Put a bit of fresh tissue down. 
Oh, bit of fuel. Not much. Just enough, just a wet whistle. And I want to see if we get any fuel coming out of here. Nothing as of yet. There's fuel in there. Yeah, I'm seeing, yeah. Yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. Coming down through the emulsion tube. And it's just here, look, there it is there. See it there? So we have got a carburetor leak, okay? Which tells me either the float is stuck, the main jet is is, uh, is bunged. So we'll do a carburetor clean. There's no sense in uh, in firing it up until we, we fix that fuel leak. Because that would just be stupid, right? Can't teach stupid. Well, you can in this workshop. Um, what I want now is my set of forceps, which I have just put away somewhere. I've only got one set. I had three sets of forceps. Three whole sets of forceps. And now I can't even find the set I had before. What's going on there then? There we are. But now I put a new fuel hose in there. I can now clamp that. Oh, yep, see how these are broken. I keep bending them to try and make them work, but they're not, they're not having it. The teeth, are, the teeth are no good. Let's try that. So, feel free to go on my Amazon wishes, people, and buy me a set of forceps. They're on there. They're on there. Bigger the better. I've got these plastic ones, but they're no good for the, for the thin hoses. So we're going to do a carburetor clean, as I just said, only because uh, we're leaking fuel. Okay. So um, I was foreseeing it anyway, to be fair. I was hoping to get away without having to do it, but um, not going to be the case. So fuel pipe comes off. Off comes that. That, that fuel is actually quite yellow, and that's not my fuel. That's coming a bit cleaner now. Um, we want to remove the governor spring. And we'll remove the um, governor arm. Carburetor ring should just come straight off, like so. We we'll go over to the bench, and we we'll do a little carburetor clean on this little tiny carburetor off of the Mountfield 414. Right, onto the old bench. Got carburetor. Here it is. Where's my verse tray? There it is. That's the old gasket. I just uh, just took a copy of there. Let's make sure you're in shot, which you are. Um, right, quick clean. So I want to see what sort of state this, uh, this carb is in. I'll get my 10 mil socket impact just on the bottom, just to, just to shock it. That's all. Now I am, something may notice my fluids run down this corner. My, my shed has subsided slightly and I'm in the process of jacking it. I've done the other side over there. I'm in the process of doing this side as well. Let's get a little tiny hammer, and I've ordered myself a little tiny hammer. I was watching Bruce the other day, he's got a little tiny, little tiny, tiny hammer. I've ordered one, they look quite good. So remove that, oh, that feels stiff too. Yeah, so we've got a rusty, little rusty bowl, very rusty, not rusty rooster, another type of rusty. Um, So I'm getting a little tiny bit of air coming through there, a very small amount. Take the pin out, take the float out. Main jet. Let's have a look, see if someone's been in previously. Let's have a little look. Yeah, somebody's been in there. The old main jet is a little bit um, knacky poodied. Cool, yeah. Someone's been in there. I need a slightly larger bladed screwdriver to get that main jet out. Let me go for that boy there. That's quite a good one. But this has got to come out. Otherwise, we don't stand much chance of repairing this, this, this mower. I don't think it's going to come. I don't think I'm going to get it. There's a bit of brass just come out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a vise and I'm going to heat up this emulsion tube here. In fact, I'll do it um, with you guys watching. Just want to get my mat gas and just want to heat up that carburetor very, very slightly. <clears throat> just to try, oh, just to try and, uh, 
add that jet out. So what I'm going to try and do here is without damaging the actual carburetor itself, it's just going to try, without burning myself, and warm up this tube enough to get this jet, okay? So go very careful. Doesn't want a lot of heat, just enough just to try and soften it. Oh, now that jet's at it. I don't think I'm gonna get that out. I can lock it, but I can't undo it. Someone's already been in. Somebody has already been in there. I could use an easy out, but I haven't got a spare jet for it. So that's not gonna work. Let me bring you guys back a touch, get into my carburetor cleaning file kit. I have to try and do this the, uh, the old way, which is not very good, not very successful on these. But this is the problem you get when people have been playing with stuff that perhaps they shouldn't be. Well, I say it shouldn't be, but uh, the top of that jet was, was slightly mauled anyway. Now a new carburetor for one of these is around about 16 pounds. So, you know, you can, you can get them from Amazon, um, but uh, they, you know, um, I like to try and repair them if I can. I'll not go one size up if I beat that. would be nice, try and get that to go in there. That one there, you're the one. Well, you're the, you're the kitty, let's go you. Let's try and fit you in that main jet hole. There it goes. That's gone in. It like that. All right, that might be a little bit too big, but I, I can now see the actual um, hole in the jet. I may have gone too far, but we shall see. That can now go into there. How hot's that carburetor? That's all right. Isn't it funny, us, us as human beings, we see how hot is that and you touch it and you burn yourself. Oh, that's hot, yeah. So now I'm just running some stuff through. And I'm gonna, gonna clean every single hole there is on here. That's coming out the top of the carby. That's good, we like that. That's all good. So it's running, it's running out all that, all that brass stuff that's in there. We've also got a slow running jet here also, part of the slow run idle circuit. <clears throat> Shame that jet didn't come out, but it's, it's, that's what it is, you know. Sometimes we just, we just, that's just the game we play. I could use an easy out, but then you're going to really damage the jet. I don't have a spare jet for this, so. Take that out. There's a bit of gunk in there, not a lot. That's a slow idle circuit sorted out. That's all good. Primer assembly. That's all good. Happy with that. Slow idle circuit jet. That's not running. So my slow idle jet is blocked, which should be the thinnest one I've got. I think that's Mr. Finnis. No, that's Mr. Finnis there, possibly. Oh, that's thicker than that. What's happened here? Yeah, that's thinner, that one there. It's definitely not running. Can't get nothing to run through that. There should be a little tiny hole. That ain't running. Let me get an air compressor on that. 
try and blow a bit of air. Try and force it to come out. Right now I'm seeing a bit of, a bit of bubbling going on. Yeah, it's running better. Not brilliant, but it is running to a degree. Let's try again. Now that jet is absolutely tiddly in there. There it goes, that went. You don't want to open them up too much, that's a problem. You open up too much, you're gonna have problems. That is running. <sighs> that's good, uh, that can go back into there now. Happy with that, we'll put that in. <sighs> this is a problem you have when it, those jets don't come out. Oh, they can be pickles. You can just buy the jet, I believe, but it might just be just to put a new carb on, but you know, I'm trying to do this before, um, before I have to go down the Amazon road or whatever, you know, eBay, because I'm telling you, parts at the moment, oh my Lord, getting parts at the moment is absolutely horrendous. I don't know how you guys and girls are doing, but I'm really struggling just to get parts in. There's a bit of dirt right in there. I can see it from here. So there's a bit of dirt right underneath where that needle goes. Let me just clean this up. I can see it with the naked eye. Let me try and fish that out. It is tiny, but that might be the entire reason why we're getting that's gone in the hole. Come out of there. That might be the reason why we're getting a little tiny bit of leakage. I can see it. It don't want to come out though. There it is there. I'm going to try and put a bit of air in it. I can see it from here. It says me. It's the tiniest amount. There's a bit to see that come out. I think I got it. That was it there. Just there. Tiny little thing. So that might be what was holding the needle up. It looks nice and clean now. So we're happy with that. Just make sure that your um, your end of your needle is fine and clean. Sometimes I get a little bit of a glaze on them where um, the fuel has, con has uh, congealed. That looks okay. That can now go back on. Hit my pin. Stick all that on. That's working fine. So that's good. Let me bring it back again. I want to get myself a bit of uh, wire wool, quite a good lump of wire wool. And all I want to do is just try and clean up this uh, this bowl. It's got a bit of rust on it. A bit of WD-40 goes in, just to loosen it all up. And then a wire wool, just to remove this rust. There's no pitting. Or if it is, it'd be a very small amount. <clears throat> so I'll just start with the outside of a wall first of the bowl. You just use your finger, work it round. God. Bit of pitting there. And then work your way in the centre. 
Use your finger and thumb. A finger and a thumb is just enough to give your kids a treat. That's actually not a pervy song, it's actually about a chocolate biscuit in the UK. <clears throat> Looking back at it now, being a bit older, you'd think that sounds a bit pervy, doesn't it? Yeah. Oop, I dropped me uh, my wire wall. So this bowl is not actually in the best condition. I might actually have a spare bowl for one of these. Because if we don't if we don't get it clean, it's just gonna have an inherent problem. Let's see how that looks. I don't think I'm gonna get it. Well not too bad. I got most of it out. It's just a bit round the back. Uh, back here. <sighs> bit across the top of that edge as well, what where that ring's gonna go. And a bit to set. It's all about fingers and thumbs. Now that we're getting there, it's a hundred percent better than what it looked like before. My shed's definitely subsided. I think I've raised it so far about 14 millimeters so far by my big toolbox. Now my drawers will now actually stay open, whereas before they were they were closing on their own. I get down in there. And down in that little side just there. That's it, that's the one. Nailed it with that one. All right, that'll do us, I'm happy with that. It's not 100% perfect, but it's better. And with a new E10 fuel coming in, we're gonna, we're gonna see this problem a lot. All right, happy with that. It's much better than what it was, okay? It's not perfect, perfect, but it's, it's, it's better. So I'm happy with that. Um, so now we can put this bowl back together. Uh, fuel comes in this way. So you've got your bleeding bolt there. Which right pins in. That's gonna go on there like so. You know what's a clean too. Just the end of that bolt. I was just gonna put rust straight back into the uh, into the main main jet. You might have to clean up. I right, do him up loosey goosey and I'll do it up with a spanner, not the impact. And I'll go back over to the machine and we're going to refit it and check for fuel leaks. See how we get on. Right, back on the old uh, mower again. We'll get the 10 mil out. As I say, I have just literally jacked my shed up because my tools was my toolbox was sliding. Look, my toolbox um, drawer was actually sliding. Uh, going back in on its own, but now I've jacked it up and now they're staying, staying where they are. So hopefully I'll fix that. Over the two years, it has just slightly sunk a bit. So carby on, that's been done up. Carby can now go on. Happy with that, fuel lead goes on. Hook up my fuel line. Now, there's a chance that this will still hunt. If it does hunt, all I should do is get a new carburetor for it because I can't get the jet out. My, my, my options are very, very limited. Uh, gasket on. Uh, don't forget to put your primer bulb assembly on, your hose on. It goes on there. Spin it round onto the first and second stud and then just round the back, make sure your air crankcase breather pipe goes on. That's all on. I need my impact, which is over by me carb cleaning station. <clears throat> we do that up. Oh, hello, that's cross threaded. What's happened there then? I cross thread that. I think I might have done. Yeah. 
we got it. We got it. Right, that's all on. I've got, oh, I've got, I've got my car brake cables yet. Let's just check for, um, uh, governors. let's just check for fuel leaks first. Let that fuel run down. It's not coming back off now. So uh, I put my governor on, put my governor on. Yeah, there's fuel in there. I'm not seeing no fuel coming out of that bowl or out the top of the emulsion tube. So that looks good. So that's just, uh, I don't think it is. No, it doesn't look like it is. I've got to remove that again now. Because uh, I haven't put my gardener springs on. That was stupid of me, wasn't it? Uh, someone asked a question the other day about uh, 414 governor springs. As you can see, the, the governor spring, um, the rod goes through the spring. See that? Someone asked me a question the other week about that. I did tell it goes all the way through. Governor rod arm. That goes into there. Some out. It came a bit of a pickle to get on. You might have to remove your um, your screw on your idle circuit on your tick over just back that off a touch it may be just a little bit too uh <clears throat> too much screwed in for you <clears throat> to get that little garden screw back in so just back that off so that your idle your throttle flap will come all the way back so that's straight I've had this before, with it. I've had to fight with these for an hour, there it goes. And then get your spring, which is now hidden up the top, there it is. Come here, Mr. Spring. Okay, Mom. Still no fuel coming out of there, it's lush. Can now do that idle back up. So you get about two threads hanging out of it be enough uh, so no leaks and no fuel now coming out of a carby so we, we know we've got a, a, a good system however with that jet being the way it is i have a suspicion it's going to hunt and surge but we shall see i wish they started to design these jets with a hex head on them it'd be so much easier little hex head in there rather than a flat head flat is a thing of the past really that goes on there. That goes on there. Right, so, I'll keep that fuel clamp. I think we're there. We can't do much more than, uh, than what we've got. Um, we've got a, a system which now doesn't leak. We've got a new fuel hose on there and the owner said that this machine uh, just run, it runs fine, just runs really, really fast. But looking at it in hindsight, uh, it won't have run fine because uh, the governor wasn't working at all. So I have my suspicions this is, this is going to hunt and surge like, like crazy, which they do. Um, but don't be put off by it. You can just buy a new carburetor for 16 quid, but then you're in it for 36 quid. You know, so try and, try and repair them if you can. Air filter box goes in. That goes on there like that, that's all on. Right, I'll put a bit more fuel in. How much we got? Yeah, just a touch more. I mean, I'll meet you outside. We'll go for a quick little fire up, see what it do. Hopefully it'll run nice. Now this is a drive mower, I haven't tested the drive yet. Uh, hopefully the drive will work. And if it all runs as it should do, we'll, we'll go forward and I'll do a service on it. But if it don't, then it'll be a new carburetor. But let's um, take it outside and then I'll, uh, we'll go for a fire up. I won't fire it up until I get outside. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, Mountfield 4 on 4. Can't be cleaned. Let's go for a fire up. Let's do that up. Fingers crossed I don't hunt if it do. 
it'd be carby. Scrouchy, scrouchy, scrouchy. Okay, there you go, Mountfield 414 done. Um, I was lucky, I was lucky is all I'm gonna say. Um, the main jet would not come out and uh, I was able just to force through a bigger file to open that up. The problem is you don't get to remove the emulsion tube, that's the issue, so you need to be a bit careful there, but with enough cleaning, um, and if you're thorough enough, then you can get those little tiny Mountfield 414s to run through. I stood every chance of, of not doing it because I have had other Mountfield 414s that just hunt, 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 and you just can't stop them to put a new carb on. So I was quite lucky there. And for what I paid for it, 20 quid, I'm quids in. A um, new bit of fuel hose and a carburetor clean. That machine will now go on to a full service and then away it goes to cut someone else's lawn. So it's super, super happy. If you enjoyed this little episode of Mixed Mars, don't forget to hit the old subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all about where you'll be told why I've done a video or two on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.